I was interested in minimal sculpture at the time and all that and conceptual sculpture. So what I did is I just built a, a six foot enclosure of, uh, of aluminum that was taken to ground. And then the premise was is that that object, which is striking enough because it looked like a Lucas Samaras, it was, you know, when it was lit, it was beautiful. And um, you could go in that space and hypothetically you could say, well, this is a radio free environment. I could, I would take a portable radio in there and it would go into, hit, you know, just be hissing. And then it was basically a, a six foot cube of a relatively free of electromagnetic radiation. So that was the object. So in order to, to activate that, you'd not, you need not only the object, you need a text which index the phenomenon. And, and so when I first got to Toronto, that's what I was doing. I was doing all kinds of things with invisible phenomenon, whether, whether so it would be, I was building uh, Faraday cages because I was shielding myself because I was doing experiments with uh, ultra high frequency electricity, Tesla coils, and this is what I was doing. When Lisa and I were cohabitating, I was doing all that kind of thing and then helping her with her video, basically. Now, w could we talk about, um, were you influenced by anyone in that, in that line of work? I'm thinking especially with the radio waves work. Um, was that something that was, that was um, basically that you were influenced by others, or was that something of your own? I think, it was, I think I could have been influenced by others, but didn't know where yeah. to go. You yeah. know? Um, so I was just, you know, I mean, people are into Nikola Tesla today, and there's been so many books and movies and totally, everything else. Yeah. But at the time, you know, I would go to Rochdale to their bookstore, and like, you know, I have, uh, you know, his complete collection of patents that I purchased at Rochdale. <laughs> you know, I was reading, you know, Wilhelm Reich, and you know, or I yeah. built an Orgone box at A Space. I was interested in all types of things which couldn't be, uh, couldn't be experienced except by description. Yeah. Right. Because I was interested in, initially, in phenomenology and you know, Merleau-Ponty, all this stuff was sort of coming out at the same time. So, yeah, so in 73, I did that show with the Faraday cage, and, you know, I was very, very uh, excited about that piece and the idea that you could build a laboratory right in the gallery and, you know, and do this, et cetera. And then, so that's something that we don't have, actually, in the chronology, is the fact that there was a text component to the, to the piece. It's basically just a description that we pulled from the A-Space fall at the AGO. Yeah, I saw that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so there was a there was a text component describing the phenomena of of this space being free of radio waves. Yeah, it's like a one page text. Like I could, I, you could certainly have the text. You know, could send oh, it to oh, you. That'd be great. And uh, and then I have uh, photo documentation as well. You know, which you'd be welcome to. And and uh, um, so that that's seventy three. And let me look at my CV. When that other? Do you know right offhand when that uh, text show was? I think it was seventy four. Yeah. I don't have an exact date though. Yeah. I can. Actually, I just have to find my own resume. Yeah, it was no, November '74. Yeah, so that that was a, and I, I was interested because I'd never seen that text, uh, never seen that text information that you had uh, from A Space. You know, somebody commenting that they were looking for these devices and things. Because I was building all these devices, but only exhibiting them through photography, uh, and then, uh, but. I was very intrigued with the notion of, of not only creating an indexing system for a physical object so that you could, uh, you could understand it you know, better, but I was also interested in uh, removing the object completely. Um, and I, I, you know, I was very influenced by the whole dematerialization and the politics of, of the sort of anti-art sort of movement. And, and Douglas Hubler, you know, and the great statement, the world is full of objects, more or less interesting. I do not wish to add any more. Add any more to that, yeah. Lawrence Wiener's, you know, declaration of intent. You know, yeah. th those people were really key. Saul LeWitt, the idea drives the work. Kosuth, when he showed in Toronto, was that an important event for you? Or no, I, you know, I didn't remember or? that. I remember he was part of that because that was the OCA, uh, I think it was the student gallery. It was somebody that was just very interested in showing, and they showed some of my text-only work. And Philip Monk did a show at Carmen Lamana, the same thing. They, they were interested because I was doing a certain kind of perceptual narrative work, which was different from the art and language thing or the, yeah. you know, the, the drier conceptual thing. Yeah. So, um, did, did Co I think Kosuth may have had a solo show of his investigation at Carmen Lamana. 
Yeah, I, I went to that stuff because Sutha yeah. was never, I never, never found him fascinating. I mean, it, I, I respected him. the Hubler, Wiener, that sort of... Yeah. yeah, I was more interested in the literary crossover. Okay. And, and what happened, see, is that when, when Lisa and I were together and Colin was our friend, we really wanted to create an art was like, which was like as powerful as poetry and literature that allowed people to have their own voices and and create uh, individual perspective and persona using the medium of, of video or any other medium that and we could. So this is kind of the notion of reception, like that the viewer has a role in producing the work, is that? Well, also, yeah, that it would, that would be poetic in that sense. But the, the primary thing was is that to come up with a come up with an art form that allowed us to express personality, you know, that was not, uh, that was not rigidly defined by style and the conventions of visual art. We wanted something that exceeded that. And so, you know, my position was I was really interested in, in perceptual theory and, and phenomenology from Heidegger to, to Merleau-Ponty. And then, and then I was very interested in how many people that were influential at the time, like Alain Robrier, was writing his work. Are you familiar with Robrier's work? I am, yeah, yeah, through um, things like uh, Jealousy and those other... Yeah, Th this writing. stuff was incredible. I mean, he wrote the he wrote about the French New Novel in 1963. Yeah. You know, he's an agronomist. He's writing descriptive prose. Uh, he's trying not to write anything other than descriptive prose and analogy, but metaphors are jumping out of the woodwork, you know. and. Yeah. This is incredible. So that was a very, very powerful thing for me. So I started to go from describing and indexing physical objects in the gallery to, uh, to making descriptive works which were visual in the mind of the reader. And then from there evolving to the point where I was using other people's images like teaming up with photographers like Rodney Worden or Lynn Cohen or Lucinda Devlin, you know, p people that have become quite prominent. And I was writing perceptual descriptive texts of their photographs to extend the work to audiences um, and and uh, not as a as a person writing a caption or, or them illustrating my text but to try to come up with an equivalent object as a as an ideal as an ideal goal and that was carrying my work right through the 70s from 75 76 through to 78 and then eventually you know the the video work I do today still has the same, you know, at the same base. I'm interested in describing things in public and seeing whether or not it matches with other people's descriptions, you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of where that where it comes from. And that's when you see the, there, a lot of that's documented in the uh, cultural engineering book. Yeah. You know, 